central Anatolia. Here in the heart of Turkey is an enchanting landscape that has managed to retain its natural beauty right up to the present day. With numerous ruins, mystical cave dwellings and unique rock formations, this is Cappadocia. Who created these extraordinary rock churches? And who are the present inhabitants of this region that has been for many years well known for its tranquility and remoteness? Are the people who live here now the descendants of the former early Christians who once lived in the region's caves? And was this village built on the site of an earlier settlement? The earliest traces of human habitation here date back to the 7th century BC. The bizarre rocks held a special fascination for those who first settled here. The breathtaking variety of their form and dimensions is truly impressive. Everywhere there's an array of new and fantastic stone images. Pointed rocks seem to emerge from the ground like needles and add to the mystique of this remarkable place. This strange world is often likened to a lunar landscape. However, the rock world of Cappadocia is not as lifeless as the moon. The mysterious rock formations fire the imagination. They're an awesome sight. Just outside the town of Gorema, the Valley of Monks once had a special attraction for those who came here. And today, there are the remains of monk dwellings, as well as various early Christian churches. The entrances were built in order to not attract attention, but their interiors hide a number of fascinating treasures. Cutting into the rock must have been a real challenge. For the caves of Cappadocia did not originate naturally, they were created by man. Today, the former monastic communities have given way to others. Yet around 1,200 years ago, religious life flourished here. Close to the ancient Christian settlements are countless bizarre rock formations. Due to their shape, they were called fairy chimneys. Are the fairy chimneys also man-made and how did the rocks take on their unusual shapes? It was simply the amazing forces of nature that created them. The rock formations were created due to a layer of basalt that lay on top of a column of tough rock that protected them from fast erosion by the elements. A closer look reveals that the fairy chimneys show signs of human activity. Here, both nature and culture become as one.
Many questions arise. How deep was the faith of the early Christian inhabitants of Cappadocia when they created their dwellings in the rock? Whatever the answer, the fact is that they chose to settle in what was and is a very special place. They much appreciated its isolation and they felt safe here. From the first humble chapels and monk dwellings in Byzantine times, more and more fine religious buildings were created, many of which have survived the ravages of time. During Byzantine rule, the Christians were free from persecution. Their consequent peace of mind manifested itself in a more developed form of rock architecture. In some areas, it's difficult to believe that this was once one of the most important centers of Christianity. The first Christians to settle here did so for their own survival. In the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, the followers of early Christianity were severely persecuted. These rocks offered them protection. Surrounded by high rock walls and located far from their enemies, a number of hermits settled here, and in subsequent years the first Christian cave dwellings were created. Surrounded by the remarkable and mysterious landscape of Cappadocia, Christianity blossomed here, and small communities came into being. Although some of the cave settlements have collapsed, they nevertheless continue to possess a unique charm. The rock dwellings that have survived provide a good insight into the past and are highly atmospheric. The interior of the churches often feature magnificent wall paintings, well preserved and a delight to the eye. Today, Christianity plays a secondary role in this part of Turkey. Now it's the dervishes who are in the spotlight. Their famous ecstatic dance induces them to fall into a deep trance that is designed to bring them into contact with heaven. Hadji Begtash, an important Muslim mystic and dervish of the late 13th century, once lived and worked in this monastery. This dervish monastery was named after the mystic Hadji Begtash Veli, and since its creation has been one of the most important religious locations in the region. During his lifetime, the founder of the Anatolian Alevite doctrine preached a philosophical path of tolerance, charity and liberalism. Just a few kilometers from the Dervish monastery, we find ourselves in a wilderness that also bears traces of human habitation.
Despite their natural camouflage, the churches and homes of the Christians were eventually discovered by those from the outside world. In the 4th century, the Isauria invaded Cappadocia. The frescoes of this church date back to much earlier times and indicate the artistic skills of the Byzantines. In the nearby villages and settlements, there are traces of those bygone times. They were integrated into later buildings by subsequent generations. Both the old and the new blend together in perfect harmony. The spirit of the past not only embraces the inhabited areas, but also the natural surroundings. History, culture and nature come together in a magical way. In addition to the fairy chimneys, the ancient rock settlements with their Byzantine chapels and churches have a special magical allure. The vaults feature old paintings. Their various styles indicate when the sacred buildings were created. For many centuries, the Christian churches and rock dwellings lay hidden from the outside world. In former times, only a few travelers from Middle Europe entered the remote area of central Anatolia. The first to mention them in written form was German scientist Hans Roth in 1906. A little later, the magnificent paintings impressed Guillaume de Gervanion so much that he wrote what was the first scientific report about the region's rock churches. Systematic research began in the 1960s and continues right up to the present day. Unimpressed by the rock structures, Mother Nature reveals her incomparable splendor to all those who cast their eyes on this unique landscape. Time admiring the beauty of nature is interrupted by yet another mysterious rock settlement that, in contrast to the other regions of Cappadocia, was abandoned centuries ago and that in some places has already partly collapsed. A number of the cave dwellings were still in use after the Christians abandoned them. Here, where monks lived a remote life of peace and meditation, food was later stored. Subsequent artificial changes in the rock structures pose further questions. The landscape exudes a distinct air of mystery, a special ambience. The geological structure of Cappadocia originated mainly due to the interaction of two powerful natural forces, volcanic activity and erosion.
Both the cave dwellings and the buildings that were later constructed above the ground have also added to the transformation of the landscape. Under Turkmen and Ottoman rule, buildings were designed according to Islam tradition. The nearby Silk Road, the legendary caravan route that once extended from Asia to Europe, temporarily introduced new prosperity, as well as a new upper social class to the towns. At the foot of the cave dwellings, amid high rock walls, brand new buildings were constructed. At first, life in the caves was dangerous. The region had suffered powerful earthquakes that caused great devastation. So, alongside new buildings, many villages also contain ancient ruins, the past and present united. The tranquility of these villages is only disturbed by tourists. But no one appears to be particularly bothered. The local people are proud that they live in such an historic place. They're content with their way of life. Each building deserves closer examination as the splendid combination of both Byzantine and Ottoman building styles is most intriguing. The inhabitants of Cappadocia's villages set much store in the appearance of their homes. A fine sight. Their pride is well deserved as they live in and tend to a place of living history. A fact that is demonstrated by their own architecture and works of art. The geographical proximity of the Silk Road that assisted the survival of the early Christians was also a constant threat because it not only carried goods but also their enemies. Today, the tranquil and remote nature of Cappadocia that once beckoned the early Christians to live here has returned. Protected by rock that dates back millions of years, they were able to live a life of contemplation here. The stone also provided a good degree of comfort throughout the year, whether cold or sunny. The legendary fairy chimneys and persecuted Christians, both have been immortalized in the written word. The beautifully decorated churches that date back to the high season of Cappadocian Christianity were often damaged by various rulers, particularly the faces, including the eyes of the wall paintings. The 
the picturesque Sugonli Vadisi Valley contains a unique religious landmark, the Snake Church of Yelanli Kalisi that was first built as a tomb and subsequently enlarged. To protect themselves from the increasingly hostile outside world, entire subterranean cities were cut into the tough stone. Around 40 of those cities have been discovered in Cappadocia. Today, only a few are open to the public. When entering the subterranean city, there's a sense of mystique. The tangled labyrinth of rooms, corridors and vaults is at first confusing to those who come here. The cities were well protected. The main entrances could be closed with huge stones. In some of the cities, the inhabitants made holes in the ceilings so that they could defend themselves with spears. Their settlements were unconquerable fortresses. The subterranean cities of Cappadocia contained up to 12 floors and were almost 100 meters deep. How frequently the inhabitants were forced to withdraw into their fortified shelters is difficult to know, but it's been proven that many hostilities took place here. Now nothing remains of the former danger that once plagued the persecuted Christians of central Anatolia for so many years. Indeed, their buildings now shine out once again. Just how many subterranean cities once existed in Cappadocia is not known, and the same is so of those who first created them. Both scientists and archaeologists believe that one day further cities will be discovered. Although it's been shown that the region was inhabited in prehistoric times, it's not known if the caves were inhabited at that time. A little further southwest of the region is a 15 kilometer long and 150 meter deep canyon, Ilara Vidisi. It originated in prehistoric times due to the Melendez Suyu River. The river winds through the hidden idyllic canyon. The water and fertile soil favor dense vegetation. This valley was also once inhabited by monks. For the monks, the Ilara Valley must have seemed like paradise. The often small and almost inaccessible cave entrances lead into the well-decorated rooms of various chapels and rock churches. The varied landscape and its many fantastic rock formations, the fairy chimneys and its multitude of cultural treasures highlights the region's captivating charm. Cappadocia, this land of fairy chimneys and cave dwellings has not yet revealed all of its enigmas and today is still a place of mystique.